So here's that video I promised about HMIs. Um, again, here's a simple program. We have a, a basically a push button controlling a light. So if I toggle this bit here, you should see a blue light come on behind me. Um, yeah, blue light coming on behind me. And if I toggle the bit here, it turns off, okay? Likewise, if I press a button here, it turns on, okay? Um, when creating HMIs, create your program first. The program is important. Make sure that if you are going to have something controlled by an HMI, make sure you create a memory bit. You can't link a HMI push button to an input on an input card. It's not designed that way. So do it with a memory bit of some type, always a bool. Doesn't matter what you call it, but just make sure you know it's a bool and whether it's in your program or controller tags. Again, your call, up to you, but program or controller tags. Um, Moving forward, um, next thing we need to worry about is opening up Factory View Talk Studio. Uh, Factory Talk View Studio. I have it pinned to my taskbar. It looks like this icon, but you can always search down here and just type Factory, you know, View Talk Studio, and it looks like this. Okay, and here it is. I'm going to create a new application. This is what will greet greet you if you come open up. So new application, HMI test. Okay, hit create, and now we'll create a program. Now yours might give you an option to change resolution. Make sure you change the resolution to 400 slash 600. I'll show you where to change it if you forget in a second. So now you can go get a cup of coffee, relax, take your feet up, because it takes a little bit of time to build the program. I'm not joking. But when we get into the program, first thing we want to do is set to the proper resolution. Look on the side of the, P uh, the look on the side of the HMI, and you'll see its name: Factory Talk View. Not factory talk, uh, panel view plus 600 or 1000 or whatever. Make sure the resolution that matches the program settings, which I'll point out in a second once I get this pulled up. Another quick thing to note, make sure you know where you save all this stuff, especially the, uh, the program. I just saved it to my desktop so I can find it easier, um, but just keep that in mind. So yes, this does take a while. Wait, shoot, okay, claimed. Uh-oh. Oh wait, there's no ads. Honestly, this is probably the longest part of creating HMI is waiting for Factory View Talk Studio to load. I know I said in class, open the software, then go brew a pot of coffee. That's about right. All right, so we're gonna go into project settings once this allows me to do it. Man, this waiting is wonderful. I'm not cutting it out because I want to show you how long this actually takes. It's annoying. Ah, so now I got my arrow back. Let me click on project settings. Oh, please don't crash. Project settings, I'm gonna, because I have a 600, I'm gonna change that to a 600 and I'm gonna hit okay. Do I want to scale? I hit OK. It's going to scale everything. But now, the next thing I want and I need you to do, 
go into RS Links Enterprise and set up the communication path. You are setting up the communication shortcut between the processor you want to communicate with and the HMI you're using. You're not linking to the HMI yet. Processor. I'm going to create a new runtime configuration. And I'm going to make this go bigger in here. Okay. So now I'm going to add a shortcut. I'm just going to call it PLC because I'm unoriginal. I'm going to click anywhere off of there. You should see a little box around it. And now I'm going to open up Ethernet and I'm going to find my processor. My processor is 252. Okay. That is my processor. So once you see a small gray box here and, and this highlighted, so this and then highlight this here, all I got to do is hit apply and it'll say, yes, I want this to be my new configuration. Next, make sure you hit copy from design to runtime. This button right up here. Because we don't have a different runtime application than our design environment. Next, go down to offline tag file, hit browse. And find your program. Mine's called HMI, it's on my desktop. I'm just gonna open it. What I always do is hit verify, make sure there's no errors, everything looks okay. And now I'm gonna hit okay. Saying, do you wanna set that offline tag file? I hit yes. And now here we go. The next thing I wanna do is go over to displays. And the only one I care about is main, okay? Just for the sake of um, programming purposes, this my HMI will only go within this dotted line, but I'm gonna hit this little plus sign up here and make it bigger so you all can see what I'm doing. Now you can figure out these arrows, these pictures here, but I'm an English speaker, so I'm gonna go, and not a picture speaker. So I'm gonna go up to objects and find what I need. So push button, momentary. And now I'm gonna draw it. I can make it normally open, normally close. I can change this color, style, whatever I need. But on states, I got two states, zero and one. Well, I'm gonna write down what I want the, want the button to see. All right. Start, I can change the font. Uh, Berlant Sans looks good. That's nice and bold, why not? I can change a color, I can change it to red. I can change it to whatever I want. You know, I can make patterns like checks and stuff. And I can do it again and for, with state one when I press it, I can make it pink and say, and do something funny like, ouch, because I'm pushing the button, ha, ha, ha. I can change the font to some other font. So let's do bold this or whatever. Okay, and I can make it bigger. Maybe, yeah, there we go, let's make it bigger. I can change the alignment to like a corner, make and make it italicize and underline, maybe. Well, maybe not this font. You know, ouch, make it, you know, whatever, bold. Yeah, so you can play around with this. It's up to you. I'm just being silly. Next is the most important thing we want to connect. We want to connect. So Value is if you see the two arrows, it means I can read and write between the two, uh, the processor and the HMI. Indicator means I can only read from the processor. I'm gonna click on the three little dots, and if you don't see your PLC shortcut here, hit refresh all folders, and it should bring up your PLC tags. All right, there's my PLC tags. I always go online and main program. And there is my push button into my program, okay? Push button, push button memory bit. I hit okay, and it should populate right in here. If you double click on here, you can highlight the whole thing and paste it right down, or not. Keyboard shortcuts don't work. 
All right, and I like doing that because it gives a read back and it shows what's the state of the switch. I hit apply, hit okay, and now there's my push button. If I want to test it out, I hit this little play button up here, and now if I press it, now there's a small delay. You should see a button coming on back there. Fun stuff. I hit the stop button up here in the left-hand corner, and now I can make a light as well. I'm gonna go up to objects, and I'm gonna go to indicator, multi-state. And I'm gonna draw whatever there. I can make it a circle, I can change the states to two, and again, I can make this be, dis be non-existent for the time being for zero, or when it, when it appears, I can make it a different color, like red, border color, you know, something to make your eyes hurt, like this. I can make patterns, like brick, and say, what? Whatever I want. I'll change the style, I can change the style. You can really have fun with this. And I'll make it bigger and bold to apply and you can see what it's doing what i just so happen and i can change the caption color to black or something like that let's do this apply so now it looks a little bit more fancy or i can change to scales or something along that lines so now i can test it out Oh, it's it give me an error because I didn't make a connection. So if you get this error, it means you didn't make a connection. I did that on purpose because I'm the teacher. So now I, if I right click on the object and go to connections, I can link my tag up. So light memory bit. And notice that only is a one way communication. I hit OK. I can test it again. And now it's working. I hit stop. And now if I want to actually test the file, I can hit the running man dude up here, which is test application. This will ask me to save my program. It's going to give me an error because I don't have admin rights. That's all right. This will still work. Um, the play button and stop button will only allow you to do some testing. This will allow you to test the whole application, so if you have alarms or multi-screen or something along that lines, this is the only way to test it out on your PC. I'm just gonna hit no, hit yes, and then it should show up here. Please do not remove the uh, shutdown button or figure a way to make sure you can always shut down your runtime. So here's this. Everything shows up. Hit start, look. It's working fine. I'm gonna hit shutdown. The next step will be to create the runtime application. It's important that your runtime application um, version will match whatever is on your HMI. Well, I'm running runtime eight on this computer, so I can only put on runtime eight. So there's reasons for that. So there, I'm gonna throw that on there. And I'm gonna put this on the desktop. I'm gonna call it HMI test MER, and I will then save it. It's gonna now build, and if I did everything right, I can then transfer it to my HMI.
is completed. So now I use my transfer utility. And now I find my transfer, my transfer utility, so desktop. Oh look, HMI test, I hit open. I'll download it as that. And then now I find my HMI, which is right here. And now I download. So, okay. Now everything goes over to the HMI. And let's see if I can stretch you out a little bit more. Okay. Here is my HMI. So now I have to hit load application. And now I find the application. So I call it HMI test, right? HMI test. I hit load. Do I want to replace the communications? Yes. I hit OK. And once all the buttons come back live, I hit run application. And so now you should see if it takes it may, uh, if I hit it, it takes a second because the communications are coming in sync. But now you can see it's operating as it should. A couple other says I have you over here. If I go into terminal settings, system information. About Factory View Talk Machine Edition. If you look at ME right here, that's what it gives me my MER version I need to download. So you can see right here it says 8.0 something. That's the, the important ones. Okay, so make sure that matches. Close, 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 and that takes me back to the top. Okay, um, let's talk about saving and the like. Here on the computer, let's talk about saving on the screen. Um, you're going to need to open something called the application manager if you want this to be moved between different um, computers. Because if I just hit exit and save, if you notice, it doesn't say anything about save the application. If I make a change, say I want to tweak it slightly and I move it like over here. I can hit save, but I'm only gonna save the screen, okay? The application is a whole different animal. So for me to save the application or back it up or delete or rename, it's all through the application manager. So let me close this application because it won't like me if it's open. All right, and I'm gonna do backup application, hit next, find my HMI test, Hit next, where do I want to save it as? So I'm going to save it on my desktop so it's easier to find. And now I hit finish. And I'm not encrypting files. This is how you transfer a program made on one computer to another. By backing the application up and then you move the APA file. Okay, and now if I look at my desktop, you should see the APA file. This is the MER. Um, if I have a program that and I only have the MER, I can restore the runtime right here through this, or I need to rename it or anything like this. So I would get used to using Application Manager to back up your programs. Okay, and then the, all you gotta do is hit restore, and you can restore and look, you'll only find the APA file. So that's how we do the HMIs from start to finish. Hope this was helpful and good luck in your first HMI experience.